Welcome to the QP Buckeye Insider. We are in Fort Lauderdale, right outside the Media Hotel as Ohio State gets ready to take on Clemson. I'm Mark Koontz, joined now by Garrett Seawright. And Garrett, anytime you're dealing with a bowl game, it's not always the best talented team that wins bowl games, it's the most motivated teams that win bowl games often. Oh, you're absolutely right, Mark. You know, there's there's two ways to approach a bowl. There's, after coming off a loss especially, there's the school of thought, woe is me, we lost, we should have been in the national championship game, and you come down here and, and you get beat badly. Or there's the motivating factor that we're going to show everybody that we're, we're not the seventh best team in the country, that we're the second or third best team in the country, and you put your best effort of the season into, into the bowl game. And, and hopefully that's the mindset that the Buckeyes came down here with. We already knew Noah Spence wasn't going to be with the team as they arrived on a Sunday. Today, they're still not sure if Noah Spence is going to be in Miami in time to play. Another question mark now comes in the secondary with Bradley Roby. Yeah, he's battling injuries, and uh, it's kind of interesting to see his last year. But I'm not sure he's going to play. It's two key cogs a high-powered Clemson offense that the Buckeyes are going to be without possibly, and that could be a, a, a big hurt to that Buckeyes defense that has struggled the last two games. Another change we could see defensively, expect to see more both Tyvis Powell and Von Bell. Whether that means Pitt Brown is the odd man out, we're not 100% certain right now, but Tyvis Powell is going to be starting at safety, Von Bell at nickel, and Ohio State's going to play a lot of nickel, as they normally do, but particularly against Clemson. Yeah, it's one of the best, it's the best receiver core they're going to face all year, and you're playing a couple of young guys on the defense. We'll see uh, maybe if those tinkering and having those extra bowl practices to, to prepare for that will help, but a lot of young guys playing against some really good wide receivers. We know that Clemson can score a lot of points. A lot of people are expecting this Orange Bowl to be a high-scoring game. Clemson's got an offense that when they don't turn the ball over, which they did in all but two games, their two losses, they turned the ball over ten times. But when they don't turn the ball over, they're a very explosive offense led by the quarterback, Taj Boyd. Yeah, Taj Boyd doesn't make bad decisions. He's a, a, a very accurate passer, um, and, and he, he makes really good decisions. And sometimes his wide receivers bail him out, but this is a high-powered offense with one of the best offensive coordinators in the country with Chad Morris. Chad Morris nearly became Ohio State's offensive coordinator. When Urban Meyer was hired at Ohio State, one of the first things Chad Morris did was renegotiated his contract with Clemson yeah. to stay as the offensive coordinator. Read into that that Urban Meyer is really pushing to have Chad Morris in Columbus, but he stayed in Clemson. Also interesting thing about Taj Boyd, he almost was an Ohio State Buckeye as well. He wears number 10 because he's a big Troy Smith fan, and he said if he hadn't gone to the All-American Bowl, he probably would be an Ohio State Buckeye right now, but he went to the All-American Bowl, got wooed by Clemson, and has had a fantastic career, and it's an offense that the Buckeye Silver Bullet defense has a lot of respect for. I think challenging things you can be managing in tempo, and uh, you know you get looks at practice, and so we'll try to get good at that, and then uh, the dual threat is going to be something to deal with too, but... Um, you just got to prepare to be in the best spot for that too. Well, I, I don't know that we've seen probably as many of the, the you know, I guess uh, outstanding receivers. I don't know that we've seen uh, a crew like that you know, throughout the entire season. Um, probably offensively, we, we see a bunch of that, you know, similar stuff to what they do maybe from our offense is probably the closest thing that we see. Now, um, maybe not with as much of the vertical game and, and some of the size of the wideouts, uh, but th that, that's going to be a, a challenge to us all. Um, but I think the, the tempo and those kinds of things, uh, the best picture we can get is probably from our own offense. The idea, though, that you could be without Noah Spence, maybe your best pass rusher, without Bradley Roby against this offense, how daunting is that? It's tough, but, you know, that's why you got these other guys. You know, and, and that's, that's a part of the game that, that sometimes it, uh, you don't always account for, um, but it's a reality. And, you know, in the NFL, you can go and get John Kitten at 41 waivers and get him out of, a, get him out of uh, teaching with junior high or high school math and, and pull him onto your team. For us, we can't. We've got we to gotta develop that, that freshman kid like Von Bell that's got to go in there and play. We've got to put more weight on a guy like C.J. Barnett and, and Ryan Shazier and, and, and you know, Jamal Marcus and say, hey, if, if the guy can't go, we've got to step up. You know, it's, it's a part of the game. We've got we to gotta deal with it. And, you know, we can't dwell on it. We can't whine and complain about it. You know, next man up. It'll be a huge loss if Noah can't play. Uh, uh, we, we need some guys to step up if he, if he won't be able to, but it'll, it'll be a huge loss. He, he's our uh, sack leader on the team right now, and he's uh, one of the top in the Big Ten. And he's, he's one, he, just, he just has consistent pressure on the quarterback and, and does a great job in the run game, and, and he has a lot of experience. He, he played every game this year, and, and um, if we don't have him out there, it'll just be a, a, a tremendous loss. People didn't really take our 12 wins seriously. They thought that we beat 12 really bad teams and um, then lost. We were obviously going to lose because we played a good team. 
And, I mean, that kind of grinds at you a little bit. That pisses me off. But we have another chance to play a really good team. So it's just another chance to prove ourselves and to show that we do belong at the top of college football. How much does that help? I mean, yeah, the goal was to, you know, be a national championship. But, uh, you know, we got the next best thing. Um, you know, can't sit there and dull on that. We uh, had to focus on the task at hand. And that's at the Orange Bowl, which is a great bowl, a great opportunity. And uh, we're going to try to get the win. I'm pretty sure we're uh, over the last loss. You know, we uh Working towards this one, on, working towards this win on Friday. Coach Brothers has always done a great job at uh, preparing us, getting us prepared for the game. So that hasn't changed. I think that uh, his mood. I think he's a, he's a little more, you know, more happy. Uh, you know, a little more smiles. But uh, you know, that's expected. You know, getting a head coaching job. I mean, sheesh. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything's been the same. Everything's been great. It's interesting to, to hear some of the Buckeyes talk about it. You know, they're, they're glad that they helped Everett Withers get the new job as the Ohio State's co-defensive coordinator, safety coach, will become James Madison's head coach. Interesting career move for Everett Withers, going to a, an FBS or an FCS team, I should say, instead of an FBS team as the head coach. Some people are seeing this. He's being pushed out the door. Everybody from Ohio State's perspective is saying this is a great opportunity for him. Well, right. He's been a head coach on the F FBS level on an interim basis in North Carolina and now a uh, co-defensive coordinator of Ohio State and dropping down to FCS. It, it, it is a curious coaching move, but he's, he's made it known that he wants to be a head coach and that uh, this is an opportunity for him. He's familiar with that Virginia, the, the DMV area, and, and I think it'd be a good fit for him. But you're right. It is kind of a curious move to move from an FBS co-defensive coordinator making – a lot of money to, to, to dropping down to the, that FCS level. Interestingly, Ohio State, it looks like with the exception of Everett Withers, they're going to keep this coaching staff intact, which if you would have told people that a month or two ago, they said no way. But you look at what some of the openings have been this offseason, yeah. there really has been a good fit for some of these Ohio State rising assistants. Well, right. Uh, you look at a guy like Ed Warner who interviewed or supposedly interviewed for the Army job. He was an assistant there for a long time, so that's kind of a natural fit for him. You thought maybe Tom Herman would be a guy that could, that could look – uh, or could get a look from some college coaches, but there weren't very many mid-level BCS conference or BCS conference schools that opened up, and I think that'd be kind of the uh, the ideal fit for a Tom Herman. You know, look, Wake Forest and UConn opened up, but really not much more than that, and that was probably the interesting thing to me. I, I thought for sure, you know, Tom Herman's gone, and maybe Ed Warner's gone, but that, that's a, a big thing for this Buckeye coaching staff to be able to to keep all those guys together. Certainly with rumors swirling that Bill O'Brien is going to be leaving Penn State for the NFL. Maybe that's going to open up a spot. Maybe Ed Warner. But I, you don't know necessarily what Penn State's going to look for. But I have to say, Ed Warner is probably the most important coach for Ohio State to retain, considering they're losing four seniors off that offensive line. Oh, absolutely. Last year in their first year, you know, in 2011, offensive line was a huge problem for the Buckeyes. And now you, you bring in Ed Warner, and, and it's a strength. And, and with losing four offensive linemen, you need – a guy like Ed Warner, who, who is a proven offensive line guru, and you need him bringing back just one offensive lineman. That's a big key for them. And, and the coaching search kind of uh, ticker right now is slowed down, but Texas is going to be filled, and that could start a whole new avalanche. So, so hopefully the Buckeyes can keep all those uh, assistants that have been incredibly valuable. And this QP Buckeye insider needs to slow down for a moment as we're going to take a break when we come back much more from Florida as Ohio State gets ready to take on Clemson in the Orange Bowl.